And this thing here, folks, would be my first computer ever. Um, it's a kit that I got once again from a friend from my dad. And it's a National Semiconductor. And I called it an SCMP at the time. I just learned I should have called it a SCAMP. But I had no better idea. Uh, so it's a little development kit with an 8-bit microprocessor, I think a couple Ks of ROM and if I remember well 256 bytes of memory and I made that beautiful box out of a cookie tin. Look at that. Precision engineering. And I even made a little amplifier and put a speaker so it would make music. So of course at the time I didn't have a penny, but now that I'm old and crusty, I can spend a big box, spend a bit, spend a big bucks and buy a nice acrylic box. So I'm going to prettify it and put it in this. Yeah. Okay, it has been prettified, so I mounted it in my beautiful box. Uh, but it just has one problem. That it doesn't seem to work. If I do an init, it doesn't do anything at all. Yeah, I get this thing. I don't know if you can see. Um, it doesn't react to the keys except, I think, the two. You it does something when I do the two. Doesn't come back. The go key. Uh, and the memory key I saw, no. Term A, B, C, C key. This kit was actually the uh, European version of the SCMP. The European format card. Uh, and the interface to the keyboard was an add-on, was this extra piece of kit that you had to add and wire wrap yourself, which I brilliant, brilliantly did. Uh, so I don't know, maybe there's a wire wrong with it, or worse, uh, some of the ICs are bad or the microprocessor is bad. And since I only see a digit at a time, my first uh, inclination is to look at the schematics here, which were conveniently uh, provided with the kit. And that's the uh, device that latches the data addresses and then selects the digits. Uh, and those should move all the time. And see what's happening here. Let's do a single run, there you go, yeah. So, yeah, so that, that wiggles all the time. I couldn't find anything wrong with the signals on the scope. So I am start, starting to suspect either the processor or the PROM. I think I finally found what the problem is. It's one of the address line. Alright, one, we have bits, two, we have bits, three, four, five. So they look bizarre, but I don't think that's a problem. It's just because it goes high Z. Six, I think that's a problem. Stays low. And seven. What I think is that my um, my ROM uh, is uh, pulling the address 6 low. Actually, I can make an easy check of that. I'll just take the pin out. Let's see. ROM extracted. And this is not mistaken, yes, that's address 6. So 
So let's see if that would do it. Check for four, five, six. Hey, hey, now six wiggles. So I believe my ROM is uh, toast and uh, this is a mask ROM, an old, an old one at that. Uh, so that's basically complete unobtainium. Uh, so I was going to try to replace it with a uh, 2716, so that's a, a 4K byte, four times as big. And uh, un unfortunately they don't have the same uh, pins, but I believe you can make them work. So that's the uh, 2616 right here, 2716. And that would be my uh, you know, national MM5214. I really had to look that one up, that's a rear chip. And you can see you have to reshuffle the stuff. Okay, I decided to buy the bullet since this is my first computer and I'm attached to it. Um, I'll try to make an adapter and see if I can revive it. All right, it's all done and checked. Hopefully, I've uh, checked okay, not made a mistake. There's a million ways to make a mistake. So, if we put that in. Okay, so the next step is actually to program my 2716E PROM. And here it starts, right? So this is exactly what I have to enter. 512 bytes shouldn't take too long. I'll just key it in. Nine. And these are just great. It's a great keypad. And those are the famous cherry keys. Famous for a reason. This is I'm burning the device. Alright. Little device, you are mine. Yep. Okay, this is the moment of truth. And that guy in. And flippy the switchy. Let's see if anything happens. And nothing happens because it's not plugged in. Alright. Try number two. And it works! That's it. That was it. That was the... Um, that was the ROM and the address 6. Okay. Okay. Kit works again. Okay, we're back in shape. Um, I had to add a little... Uh, fan in there because you know, it may be a very slow processor but it sure dissipates a lot of power it was getting a little hot uh, so it works again so what can you do with that uh, well not much except one really good thing is to learn how uh, to uh, microprocessor work at the machine language level basically what those kits do they teach you how microprocessors work at the most fundamental level Right, that uh, the first thing you have to know is uh, what your registers are. And then this one I had a very limited instruction set. Here is this all there is. And then you have the base code and then you have to add a few more bits uh, to finish your opcode uh, for the memory addressing. And basically that's the lowest level at which you can program a microprocessor. Uh, except for machines like the Alto where you can even go one level lower and do microcode. Uh, but basically all you can do is uh, inspect and enter things in memory. Uh, the user memory, uh, the, the uh, RAM starts at 0F00 and then the uh, uh, ROM takes a, needs a couple of bytes to operate the display. So uh, the user uh, memory starts at 0F12 
and then you can enter in you know machine code basically let's enter 33 and go and um, let's go back to F12 and there it is so basically you would enter uh, all your instructions and uh, then there's a facility there's a go button you can uh, jump to it and execute your uh, assembly program machine instruction program and uh, I have found my old program so we'll try that so I'm going to key that one in and we're going to recreate uh, 1978 for Curious Mark. All right, so that will take a while. C4, that's immediate load, zero, zero, and so on and so forth. So, okay, I've entered my little program in F12 and I verified it. C4 0032, C4 OF36, etc. So these are all machine instructions. And then if we launch it at F12, it's going to execute them and should make music if I didn't screw up. Oh, that's not working so well. Okay, try again. I had made a mistake at kidding keyed in 02 instead of C2 uh, at address F3C so one byte error uh, and of course it doesn't work so let's see if that corrected it go it always does error the first time you try F12 no go turn there you go And what it's doing actually, it's reading the bytes in the ROM and uh, translating them in, into music notes, which gives this random melody. All right, well, this was my great achievement of early computing making music with an SCMP and at the bottom of the program there's some alternate variations so you can play different tunes and this one uh, looks promising it says in French that it's the uh, is the mad fireman siren so let's try the mad fireman siren Alright, this one is an other one I remember sweating big bullets about. It says Horloge and it's a clock. Uh, and uh, sure enough, that processor doesn't have a counter on it, uh, nor does it have a, a clock that can generate an interrupt. So I did it the hard way by timing all the instructions. So that one was great because it, it taught me you know, how to. Uh, figure out uh, instruction timing and you can see how I went in the ROM and figure out you know, how many cycles each instruction took and this uh, particular bit of, uh, of routine takes 475 microcycle and uh, so I managed just by instruction timing to make a little clock so let's try it go F7 D. All right, so here's my clock. 12 hours, 59 minutes, 35 seconds, 36, 37, 38. Uh, so I put it so you will see what happened when it um, reaches 60 seconds. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, four three two one zero and of course it goes to 13 because I was in France so this is uh, how we count the time in Europe 13 hours and uh, eight and nine seconds 
And the last one is uh, one of the most instructors. Uh, first, because it's uh, probably the longest program I wrote. It uh, uses all, almost all the 256 uh, bytes of memory. Uh, and it's a scrolling display uh, program. And also, because it had a bug in it and I never uh, finished it. And, but it gives me a hint of what the bug is. So, as an exercise, I tried to correct the bug, and I did, and I understood why I didn't do it. It's because, you know, each time you add an instruction or two, you have to recalculate all the jumps, uh, because the address of the instruction changes. So it was pretty tedious, but I did it, and now it's bug-free, and I'll demonstrate it for you. Okay, so, go F12. And off you go, scrolling display. And it's a very interesting message. It says, subscribe to Curious Mark's channel. In nice LED letters, uh, seven segment letters, and it tells it twice. So just in case you didn't get it. No, this, is, this is hard marketing work. and then it gracefully exits back to the ROM. So here you go, uh, my first computer and the uh, SCAMP microprocessor kit and probably the best toy I ever had.